Good morning, Year 2. Today, I'm really excited to share with you the story of the Great Fire of London. I'm going to start off explaining a little bit about the setting for our story, and then we will get straight down to it. I hope you're as excited as I am. Okay, so this is my map of Tudor London. It's a modern map that historians have made to show what London looked like in 1520, which was part of the Tudor period. So this map is 146 years too early for the Great Fire of London, but London was very, very similar. It didn't change too much in that time. So this is going to show us uh, what London looked like around the time of the Great Fire of London. I'm going to tell you the story of the Great Fire of London. It all started in the middle of the night on Sunday the 2nd of September 1666. At 1am 1 a fire broke out in the house of baker Thomas Fariner in Pudding Lane. The baker and his family escaped through an upstairs window, but a maid who didn't want to jump out the window and climb along the rooftops died in the fire. Church bells all around began ringing out to alert people that a fire had taken hold and was beginning to spread. All through that morning, the fire began to spread. At 3am, the mayor of London Sir Thomas Bloodworth was woken and told the news, but he took no action. He didn't even get out of bed. The fire continued to spread and it reached the warehouses on the banks of the River Thames. These were big wooden buildings full of everything that was being carried on ships to trade. So it had all sorts of stuff inside, lots of it caught fire, some of it even exploded. Later on, on Sunday morning, the Lord Mayor, Thomas Bloodworth, was advised to destroy houses in the path of the fire to stop it from spreading. There were no modern firefighters with hoses. The main way to stop a fire spreading in Restoration London was to just knock down the houses so the fire had nowhere to go. But he completely refused. He didn't want to pay for the houses to be rebuilt afterwards, so he would not take down any houses. It was Sunday morning when Samuel Pepys decided to send all his things away from the city, including his diary, and bury his cheese in his back garden. On Sunday evening, King Charles II ordered that the Lord Mayor tear down houses in the path of the fire so that it would stop the spread of the fire. King Charles's brother James even offered some of his soldiers to help him pulling down the houses, but the Lord Mayor refused. Again, he refused the King. On Monday morning, the fire spread to the north and to the west and reached the General Letter Office in Threadneedle Street. This was the post office for the City of London and all the letters were destroyed. It was on Monday morning that Sir Thomas Bloodworth, the Lord Mayor of London, the person in charge of keeping the city safe, ran away. King Charles II put his brother James in charge of fighting the fire in the city. On Monday afternoon, the fire reached the Royal Exchange, which was where people traded goods. It was full of money and it was in the banking area of the city. 
Everybody was terrified that all their goods and their money would burn and melt. So far, the wind had mostly been moving the fire to the north and to the west, but it had been creeping closer and closer east towards the Tower of London. The Tower of London was an enormous building made mostly of stone and full of gunpowder. On Tuesday morning the fire reached the shopping area of Cheapside and it started to burn the shops. King Charles II joined the lines of people passing buckets of water to pour on the flames. His brother James was at the River Fleet. The River Fleet is a very, very little river come, that comes off the River Thames and in towards the city. And everybody was hoping that the fire would not be able to cross the River Fleet. King Charles II's brother James was waiting there to make sure. But the wind was so strong that it blew the fire right over the river fleet and it started taking hold in the western part of the city near to where the king lived. The fire moved north and it reached Ludgate Hill. Ludgate Hill is an area full of booksellers Books burned so quickly, so the booksellers ran to St Paul's Cathedral, which is really close by, and made of stone. They put their books inside St Paul's Cathedral in the hope that it would keep them safe. But the roof of St Paul's Cathedral caught fire too. It had a little bit of wooden scaffolding, and the wood caught fire, and then the whole building caught fire too. By Tuesday evening, St Paul's Cathedral had been completely destroyed by the fire. On Wednesday morning, the wind changed direction. It stopped blowing towards the west and started blowing towards the east. There was a real possibility that the Tower of London could catch fire. The Tower of London was big and stone, so lots of people had put their valuable things inside to keep them safe. And it was full of gunpowder. If the Tower of London caught fire, it would probably blow up. Because it was so dangerous, lots and lots of houses really close to the Tower of London were pulled down and destroyed using gunpowder. They were blown up. This stopped the spread of the fire towards the Tower of London. On Wednesday afternoon, the wind finally dropped and enough houses had been pulled down that the spread of the fire stopped. By Wednesday evening, the fires in the west of the city had been put out. And by Thursday, fires all over the city had finally been extinguished.